So, Kenneth, we'll start with you. We're talking today about restrictions on storytelling about uh, children in care. You didn't necessarily face many of those in the case of Amy Owen. Why not? I didn't uh, just recently, but the very beginning I did. Uh, but uh, the reason why I didn't recently is because, you know, she passed. Uh, she died by suicide in a group home. And her father gave me her autopsy report. And the autopsy report listed how she went to the hospital multiple times before she died. But, you know, I get a lot of calls for people or emails saying, can I do their story? Uh, but I can't show people the color of their eyes. I can't show them their hair color. I can't show them pictures when they're happy or when they're sad. I can't make them care. I can only make them care when they're dead. And that was the, that's the issue that I find a lot, is that I want to make change or I want people to see what's going on with the system, but I can't do that because I'm not allowed to show you what they look like. I can't show you anything about them unless they have already died. And so these are restrictions put in place by, by the jurisdictions in question. Yeah, exactly, right? And the argument for that is, is privacy. Well, I don't buy that. I don't buy privacy at all. I think a parent, maybe in some cases, there are certain situations where there needs to be protection. But I think in some other times, there, 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 there has to be a situation where, there, where people can come forward and I can show you that this person's in trouble because, you know, and, and, and make you care like you would care about a dog, you know, stuck on the freeway. You know what I mean? I can show you a picture of that dog on the freeway. I can't show you a picture of the kid escaping her group home over and over and over again in an Epidorito Center because if I do, I'm going to get charged and so is APTN. All right, Kathleen, you're facing a similar d dilemma. Somebody we can't name somewhere in the country having a, 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 an experience that they're not happy about with the child welfare system where they live. What can you tell us about that? Well, not very much. Uh, APTN is very restricted, as any media outlet is reporting on these kinds of cases. C can tell you it's a, a person X, you know, can't say mom, dad, caregiver, grandparent, can't give you their name, can't tell you their community, can't even tell you their agency, uh, how many kids they have in care, why the kids are in care. All of that is private. That's under, in, um, in Manitoba, for example, that's under the Child and Family Services Act. There is a fine of $5,000 and potential jail term of two years or both. Against whom? The, uh, you as a journalist? Correct. For breaking that law and or the parent or caregiver. So the case that um, we'd love to tell you about is uh, somebody who's using a social media platform to talk about their situation and their children's situation. And they have been uh, threatened with the fine, with the jail term, if they don't shut down their account. So far, they haven't done that. So are media, try including APTN, trying to do something about this? Uh, some media outlets have reported it. Uh, we are working on a series that's going to come out next month uh, to try to explain why people don't see more stories like Kenneth has reported on. It's very tough unless a child dies, unless somebody ages out of care, unless a parent can and then gives permission. We can't report on it. And as Kenneth said, is the privacy there to protect the children? Or is it to help cover up mistakes and, uh, you know, you can't get accountability? That's why whenever there's an inquest, media usually goes crazy and covers it like mad because it's at least a way to peek into the system and mm. see what's going on. Now, Kenneth, uh, I, I, we're, in, we're in Winnipeg here. I'm very familiar with the situation in Manitoba. 10,000 Indigenous children in care. That tells me there must be lots of stories that you there in Ontario uh, potentially could, could tell as well, wh where I also know a lot of Indigenous kids are in care. Yeah, well, there, there's, well, the thing is, Ontario just started tracking Indigenous kids in Ontario that are in care uh, outside of the Indigenous welfare company uh, uh, agency. So, like in Ottawa, excuse me, my earpiece is falling out. In Ottawa, they don't, they just started tracking whether or not uh, a First Nations kid is even in care. Like, they had no idea. Those, those numbers for the last 40 years, even last year, they have no idea how many Indigenous kids in Ottawa were in care unless because they didn't track those things they okay. had like they I, and I wrote about that earlier this year but that said do you get a number of people coming forward saying please tell the story of my experience with the system yeah you get those things and you know it's it's difficult and it's frustrating because I because as a reporter if you believe in the true sense of reporting you want to you want to make change you want to help people you want to be a mirror to a problem 
well, I can't put a mirror up to their face because I, I can't show their face. And you need to see them. Like, you need to see the people. You need to see the pain. You need to see the struggle to understand it and to, and to care. And, and it's hiding in, in a cloud of secrecy. And I don't know if that's to protect the child so much as it is to protect the province. Okay. I really believe, like, I think that's just fair comment. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you, uh, K uh, Kenneth and Kathleen, for coming on and uh, sharing your experiences and, uh, I would suggest, frustrations. Thank you.